we are in Silver Spring, Maryland right now, headed to Creative Colony, where there's a community event being hosted that is called From Burnt Out to Fired Up. This looks to be a woman that has invited an open house filled with a lot of people to come and get their careers reignited. And this is going to be a great chance to explore what one woman has to offer and share with her own community. Success means something different to each of us. So what I'd love to hear from you is how you guys define success when it comes to business. New business and like growing. Growth. Yeah. Do better work-life balance, more time. Yes, work-life balance. What inspired you to be out here? This was an opportunity to share my message. I have a very personal experience with burnouts, and I know that so many other uh, creative people who want to do great work in the world end up kind of hitting a wall in their businesses where they're doing good work, but it's not fulfilling. I want us to come and share how to create a business that is aligned with your values and priorities and the way you want to show up so that you don't burn out, so that you can continue doing the awesome stuff you do and make it last. Being considered an expert or a leader. Sense of making a difference. Yes. yes. Jacqueline. Significance. Thank you, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. These are really good. Community means the opportunity to connect with other people who are not in your own brain, and to collaborate, share ideas, and support and empower others. Now, what you'll notice, all of your answers are pretty different. They weren't the same word. But if you notice, all of these relate back to a set of core values that each of us has. Wanting to make a difference, having significance in the work we're doing, achieving work-life balance, knowing that there's a sense of stability in our time. We're not spending so much time working that we don't have a life, but that we are doing work that's good and meaningful and fulfilling for us, right? The idea that what we're doing is moving us in a certain direction. It's creating a certain kind of outcome for us. We aren't just working just to work. And we aren't really working just to make money. We're working to achieve something, some kind of bigger picture, some kind of higher level. You guys agree? Mm -hmm. All right. And what do you think is the hardest piece of hosting an inclusive community event like you did today? Well, it's harder to kind of capture the pain points and challenges of everyone. Not everybody is in the same place at the same time. And what was really cool was that you had one gentleman that you helped completely change the course and path of his business, yeah. figure out what markets he wanted to go into. Yeah. So for a step up to increase income and, and offer that as you know a piece to your own community from your expertise, I think yeah. it's a really, yeah. it's a great, great thing you're doing. Yeah. And what I love too is that the other members in the audience just jumped right in there and helped him with ideas. And that is what I love about hosting workshops and having community like this. It's irreplaceable. I had a very, very personal experience with burnout and as entrepreneurs, we know, we want to show up, we want to do exciting work, we want the work we do to be significant, but when the work we do isn't aligned with what we value and how we show up best, we basically end up kind of fiddling out. I help you to connect the work you do with your values, priorities, and your strengths so that you can hustle smarter, earn better, and have that fire, that spark, that passion that you want to have about the work you do. You guys are here today because there's something that sucks about your business right now. What we're going to work on today is going to help to change that, hopefully for good. In your packet here, there's a simple question that I want you to answer. Be honest. What sucks about your business and the work you do right now? We're going to work together to develop a framework for your business so that it won't suck anymore, but that, <laughs> that it's aligned with your sense of satisfaction and this it's a feeling really connected and purposeful about the work you're doing. Is anybody excited about getting satisfied in their business this year? <laughs> All right. A lot of times we start off monetizing skills, but not really looking at how to build a foundation of the work we do around what we value. What happens when we don't um, build a foundation for our work based on our values is that we end up becoming disconnected from our work, disillusioned, discontented. We're like, why am I spending all this time working so hard? Maybe making decent money, but I'm not fulfilled, I'm not satisfied. You get to a point where you don't feel like it's really worth it anymore. You lose your motivation, your reason for why you're showing up and doing this. And eventually, you kind of fizzle out. And look, there is no shame here. We're all here to solve this problem so that we can move on and have really exciting, happy, fulfilling businesses. Maintaining your motivation is the key to maintaining your success. So if you want to maintain that success, if you want to be able to stay in this for the long haul, 
you have to be able to build satisfaction into your business strategy. You want to maximize your money and maximize your impact and minimize your effort. You want to do the least amount with what you have and know to create the biggest impact and to earn the most money. You want to minimize your effort because, again, we're talking about avoiding burnout here. We're talking about creating a sustainable way for you to run your business that you're also able to maintain the kind of balance and freedom you want to have. What are you earning for? What does that 120, 140, 1 1.7 million, what does that afford you? Worrying less. Yeah. Not having to pay attention to every dollar you spend. Yeah. Okay. What kind of freedom, Pam? Well, financial freedom. I'll say the freedom of choice. How's that? Yeah. You can choose how you spend your money, choose how you spend your time. That's my jam right there, you guys. I am all about ending the hustle. <laughs> Providing for your family, I like that one. I'm gonna call one or maybe two of your brave souls up here to workshop this out. Paula, Paula, tell us a little bit about what you do. I'm a lawyer and until about six months ago I was executive director of a nonprofit dealing with workplace issues. I left the job itself, although I still work for the nonprofit as a consultant. I'm in the midst of this process of trying to change okay. you know what I do all day in my job and you know be able to make money from it without losing my life. Okay. And I also want to get to the point where I have more clients and do some projects that I was never able to get to while I was still working for them. When you think about the work you're doing, what is the impact that you want your work to have? I want uh, people to have access to information about their legal rights and people to have better job satisfaction. Almost empower them to be able to make the right choices for themselves. What's emerging is how she wants to spend her time, what impact she wants to have, and we're going to get to what she wants to earn and what she wants to be able to do with her money. You want to do more one-on-one? -on -one? I want to individually counsel workers about their job situation and provide them with strategies to, to move forward. Do more of the big thinking and not the death by a thousand emails. Stay high level. Why aren't you doing that now? I didn't realize how many people were doing the job of. So even though I've got one person and I'm starting to delegate a lot of it, I was still doing way more than I ever realized. What is the biggest thing you felt stuck doing yourself that you want to get off your plate? I want to automate more things that I'm doing manually. You know, sending out emails on a like marketing on an automated basis, accepting payments, just automating as much as I can. Systems. Yes. It's a nonprofit, so I'm dealing with board of directors, 13 bosses. Wrangling board. So when you're shifting your focus from this organization you're working with to your one-on-one -on -one clients, you won't be dealing with board members. Once your systems and your marketing are automated, what will you have more time to do? Working on a book, you have all these constant interruptions and it's hard to really concentrate and think. What does that do then? You write a book and you're established as an expert in a particular area that, that helps you bring in more one-on-one -on -one clients. So what's your big concern? We're still in the middle of a transition. I haven't turned over everything in my head okay. to someone else who can take it on. So it's scaling. It's a scaling issue. So what I'm seeing for you, you may want to start looking at what your profit strategy is right now. When you look at all the stuff you're doing now, having to manage the marketing, having to manage all the back end stuff, um, and then dealing with the board, which is almost like pulling yourself in two completely different directions. So this actually seems like a relatively, this sounds crazy, relatively easy problem to solve. Your first step is gonna be looking at everything you do. It sounds like you've started this. But you want to sort of think about where you want these clients and, and what you're doing is also changing a lot. You're going to be mm -hmm. focusing directly with these one-on-one -on -one clients. So at some point, you need to carve out some time to think about who these other people are, where they're at right now, what they want, what it's going to take to help them get what they want, right? So mapping out your own process to 
helping these clients in a similar way that you're doing for this, this organization. It sounds like you're still kind of stuck over here that you can't really think about what the future of your business is going to be. There's no clarity around how that's going to work and so you kind of just, you know, leaned yourself into, sorry to say it, but staying stuck, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Afford yourself the opportunity to think about the future of your business. Think about where you're headed. Focus on these fabulous clients that you want to be able to work with directly to counsel and, you know, to come up with strategies for them. Figure out where they want to be, what it's going to take, you know, what your core thing is going to be that you're helping them, um, so that you're helping them accomplish what they want. And then figure out on that side of it what your role is going to be, what other support roles you might need in place. And then start putting those pieces together. And I think what will happen for you is you'll open up yourself and your mind and your heart a little more to making that happen, you may realize that you don't, ha you know, it may not take as much time to bring somebody else in to take over some of this stuff for you. But the other thing, and I know this is tough because you're kind of just wedged right on in there, some of the immediate possibilities would be to say, hey, we're trying to transition, we're trying to get you guys through this, we need more money, or we need more people. Like, ask for it. We're trying to establish the kind of value, value and support for you guys. It's going to cost this amount. Mm -hmm. Go in and ask for that and see if they don't say, hey, well, we like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, we're getting more? Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Here's, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I just did some of that, so it really, you know, yeah. matches with kind of where I'm at right yeah. now. So. so, yeah, it just, it really feels like you're you're mostly stuck because you, the future is not clear. So if you can paint that out um, really, really precisely, I think you'll, you'll find yourself feeling much more ready and energized to move in that direction rather than being stuck there. Good. All right. Thank you so much for your time. One of the hardest things to do is to make the leap from where you are now and the way things work now to where you want to be. A lot of times it takes more money, it takes coming up with more time that you kind of don't already have, um, and maybe even building in support persons in place to help you to, to make it all work and to, to make that transition. So the very next step for most folks in this position is to get very clear on the value of what it is you want to do. So once you've figured out a framework for the kind of business you want to have and you're clear on what you want to offer, how you want to show up for people, what impact you want to have, your next step then is to look at what is the real value of this. And the best way to do that is to make sure you're, you understand, one, who those clients are that you want to be working with, what their ultimate outcome is and what process you take them through. Because you guys are experts, even if you may not realize you are. There's an expert process that you take them through to help them to get where they want to be. Once you have that figured out, you essentially have a blueprint for what your positioning is, what the value of your work is. And you can package your process into offers that your people are gonna wanna eat up like candy, you're going to be able to develop messaging that explains the value of what you do, conveys that in a way that resonates with the people you want to attract. And it'll be a lot easier to develop content, and write the book, and do the work that it takes to get in front of those people, bring them into the fold, and, and work with them. What am I delegating for? What is this going to afford me now that I'm taking this off my plate? If you value not having to drudge through research and you'd rather be you know, in your cozy little corner with your coffee writing and creating some awesome content for your, your clients and your audience, by all means, let somebody else do the research because then you get to jam on, you know, your zone of genius. I hired a virtual assistant and I hadn't been hauled about it for a long time. I started small, I gave her, like she invoices for me at the end of the month. But she pushes back a little bit, like I could take on this task. Like, oh, okay. I try to think of it constantly like when I want to do research, but I don't have time for it. The trust that you mentioned is really key because I feel a connection with her, even though I've never met her in person. Starting small is helpful. Hopefully yeah. I'm trying to work through and like release a little bit more and give her more things to do. Yeah. <laughs> we spend so much time on the back end trying to just figure out, you know, how do we make this work? How do we make it good? How do we make sure? 
um, that you know people are going to pay us for it. And especially when you're starting, you just want to get right in front of the people. And the best way to do it is to show up with understanding what their problem is and having a solution that's going to solve it for them. Todd and I just finished the classroom burnt out to fired up. And he just got some advice in the class. So is that going to help your outlook for your business? I feel great. Really, so what's your topic today? Uh, that's why you have to read for the hour that I spent there. You have a really cool business idea, too, bringing music into real estate. Yeah. So is this uh, advice that has been given to you in the class, does that help you figure out what direction you want to go into now? It's helping me kind of expand my what I perceive as my market. That's great. So in terms of a community event, this has been very impactful for you to be here. So it's been very impactful.